Can you see it? A revolution is sweeping the world, fueled by generative AI and co-pilots, and it has only just begun. Generative AI is no longer a niche technology for a few, but an accessible tool for everyone. We stand at the nexus of AI and automation. The question is how to use this change to your advantage, how to transform your business by leveraging the power of AI. Copilots help you create content across applications and processes, gain a competitive edge, launch quicker, and act responsibly with sensitive information, boost creativity, service, and inspire new ways to free up time for higher value tasks. Embracing the capabilities of Copilots is not merely an option, but a necessity for modern workplaces aiming to thrive in the competitive and ever-evolving digital landscape. The potential of AI is what has inspired us to create Copilot Factory, a unique framework to build custom AI tools for your organization. It's why we have invested in our capability and capacity to deliver this new generation of productivity. Innovation is at the core of Copilot Factory. It's how we deliver breakthrough systems that optimize operations, drive the bottom line, and help the communities we serve while remaining economically and environmentally sustainable. When you extend your data with AI, experiences transform and your team can reach new heights. Join us and build your future with Copilot Factory from Clear Concepts. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today and sharing your valuable time with us uh, today. Uh, we are extremely excited to announce our new Copilot Factory Business Unit, which has been over three years in the making. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce who is on the call today. Uh, at the top, um, we have Kyle Braun, AI and Data Analyst. Uh, we have Ryan Bialik, Manager of AI and Modern Work, and myself, Glenn Kemp, managing partner at Clear Concepts. And I also want to give a brief background in our company, Clear Concepts. We're, we're a full-service IT firm in Winnipeg, but serving clients right across Canada. We have a team of over 55 professionals, and most important for the context of this webinar, we've been working on AI solutions now for almost four years, which has led to the creation of the Copilot factory. Now, here's the agenda for the call today. We will have some time at the end for any questions. Just enter them in the chat window and Angelica will be monitoring it. We are also recording this session and this will be available on our YouTube channel at a later date. Today we will be covering what is a co-pilot factory? Background and current state of AI, our approach to AI and prompt engineering, our investments in AI capability, the co-pilot factory framework, and custom co-pilot examples at the end. I know all the news about AI has been overwhelming over the last year. It is hard to determine what to make of all the advancements that are coming at such a frequent pace. And we can tell by the attendance of this webinar that there's a lot of interest in this topic. If I can share one takeaway for everyone on this call, even if you don't work with us to advance your own AI initiatives, I strongly recommend that each organization establish an AI committee to better understand how AI will impact you and begin making plans on how best to tackle the big challenges that come along with implementing AI solutions in your organization. Find out where your business might be vulnerable to AI advancements and tackle these cha challenges head on. Every department should have a seat at the table, embrace diverse perspectives and reward creative ideas. These outside of the box ideas are gonna help you reimagine what org your organization will look like in the next two to five years. The infinity mindset is something I've been talking about a lot. And we need to adjust our expectations around AI and open our eyes to something that is once in a generation opportunity to grow, scale, and advance in our organizations in ways that previously would have been impossible. There is really no limit on what AI can help your business achieve and I sincerely hope Copilot Factory is along for that journey with you. 
Now, what is a co-pilot factory? Essentially, we help guide organizations through the process of adopting AI in a way that's both practical and tactical. As I mentioned, we've been working with AI solutions for almost four years now and have learned a few things that can help accelerate your business transition into AI. First, we've tailored our solutions to small and mid mid-sized business segment. Most AI solutions available today are designed for enterprise and come at a big ticket price. Second, we are focused on time to value propositions that have a lower upfront cost. Most of our bespoke AI solutions are in the $5,000 to $50,000 range with a strong emphasis on return on investment. Third, our co-pilot factory team is multidiscipline, meaning you can partner with one firm to end to end. We've invested in staffing the AI consultants, analysts, trainers, and developers, so you don't have to. And as, as you will hear later in the call, we can help you plan, implement, and provide ongoing support for your AI initiatives. And fourth, we leverage the technology from AI leaders, OpenAI, and Microsoft. Everything developed by Copilot Factory belongs to you and is hosted in your Microsoft Cloud tenant. One of the most frequently asked questions I get is, what is a Copilot? Essentially, this is an application or an automated process that incorporates artificial intelligence in one way or another. This could be a large language model like ChatGPT, natural language processing, computer vision, or all of the above. A Copilot can be implemented for a singular task or more complex in nature. The AI industry has adopted the name Copilot as a catch-all for a human-assisted application that incorporates AI features. It's as simple as that. You can see the top 10 benefits of a Copilot here on the screen. These are all really compelling for your business, but I'm only going to touch on a couple of these today, those being time savings and efficiency. Here are some key statistics from Microsoft. They surveyed business users that were on the Microsoft 365 Copilot beta program, which, is con which con was conducted from May to December of 2023. These are all really impressive, but the key statistic here is that a typical business worker is 29% faster on common office tasks, such as searching, writing, and summarizing. Now let's drill into the number, numbers a bit. Microsoft's own AI Copilot is a plugin for Microsoft Office products like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, and is priced at $475 annually. Even if you take only one third of the time savings for a task-based worker that Microsoft's reported during these beta trials, this is an 18 times ROI, over $8,000 annually for each, each and every employee using the AI Copilot. This essentially frees up these users for more meaningful work. Kyle's actually going to touch upon this a little bit more detail in, 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 uh, uh, later in the pre uh, presentation. Now, before we get into details about our Copilot factory, I wanted to give everyone a bit of a background on how AI evolved so quickly and became the big news story since late 2022. To illustrate my point, I'm going to connect a few dots in the next five slides. First, I'm going to start with cat photos, then video games like Call of Duty and end on Transformers. I promise we're not gonna get too technical. Is everyone ready? Let's start with cat photos. ImageNet is an initiative that started out in 2006 as a project for major universities to build out a huge database of labeled images to use in AI studies. In 2010, ImageNet started a competition for universities and other interested parties to scan these images using AI and ident identify the subject. The highest accuracy was the winner. In 2012, the University of Toronto won the competition by a large margin, which drew worldwide attention to how they accomplished this result. The winning algorithm was called Al AlexNet, and it was extremely unique in two ways. First, they used off-the-shelf NVIDIA GTX 590 graphics cards instead of Intel CPUs to process the images. In 2012, these cards normally would have been used in gaming computers playing Halo or Call of Duty. 
And as you can see in the image here, a typical Intel CPU of the day would have been more oriented towards processing in a linear manner. A 2012 Intel processor that you see here on the screen would have had two cores with four threads each, meaning that would have processed eight pipelines of data simultaneously. An Intel, or sorry, an NVIDIA GTX 590 card in 2012 had 1,024 cores, which would have processed an incredible 188, 128 times more data than the Intel CPU that you can see above. Data being processed in parallel like this increases the number of passes over the images to improve accuracy, and it even finished four times faster than the second place contestant. Any gamers in the audience today will know how demanding a video game is on processing. 3D, fast gra uh, frame rates, smooth graphics, all require powerful graphics cards to make the game appear realistic. I want to note here that graphics cards are often called graphics processing units or GPUs. You may hear this terminology quite frequently when it comes to AI. Now, not only was AlexNet innovative in the use of NVIDIA graphics cards to process AI, they were also one of the first to use a neural network algorithm. A neural network architecture is based upon how a brain works, with dendrites acting as the inputs, or the seeing, the hearing, and the feeling, the nucleus being where the computation ha happens, or the thinking, and the axons being the outputs, or the response. This is how humans digest information, think, and make decisions or take actions. The Alex neural network had inputs, computation layers, and outputs, just like the brain. The next stage of AI processing came in 2018 with what is called a transformer. The transformer architecture is what all modern AI models use today. It improved upon AlexNet, what it, it improved upon what AlexNet accomplished by how it processed words and sentences. AlexNet and other similar models processed a whole sent sentence sequentially, meaning that all data from the sentence was transferred at once and it would have been limited by memory to store the information. The longer the sentence, the greater number of errors it would have had. In the transformer model, sentences are actually broken down into words, and the words are turned into numeric values for ease of processing. The words are also aware of the other words in the sentence. This self-awareness, as it is called, is encoded into the data, improving accuracy and performance significantly. Now, as you can see by this next illustration, we are now able to scale AI in an almost linear way. The computations required to process AI are very efficient, and, the add and adding layers upon layers of computation improves the results without introducing bottlenecks. And just like they found with the AlexNet al algorithm, the transformer model is best suited to NVIDIA GPUs. And the more GPUs you use, the more you can scale and add capabilities to the AI model. We no longer need to wait for Intel to come out with the latest and greatest CPU every year to improve processing for AI. And the good news for your business is you don't need a bunch of graphics cards installed in a server in your back office. AI computing is cloud-based and you only have to pay for what you need. And by the way, this is a recent NVIDIA revenue chart showing how quickly this company has grown from, from a focus on video, guard, video cards to being one of the most important companies in AI. Just last week, NVIDIA posted their latest quarterly results to shareholders, and the results were spectacular. They are now the fourth, fourth most valuable company in the world, and they just passed Google. This is almost a $2 trillion market capitalization which is also the same as the entire Canadian economy in 2023. And the last thing I wanna to touch upon today before I turn it over to Kyle and Ryan is something that OpenAI announced only last week. Sora is the new AI model that has everyone talking. What you see on the next screen here is a text prompt, much like you would use with ChatGPT. Instead of a text or image response, we now have full high definition video capabilities. And not only that, these videos will be completely editable. You can change characters, colors, backgrounds, and camera angles. Here's the prompt. 
A stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm, glowing, and animated city signage. Run the video. Now, if you ask me, this is super impressive. I'm not an expert on film, but what I see is immense opportunity and potential here. After the release of Sora last week, there's been a lot of news about it. The impact on film and video production is, is very top of mind for a lot of media, including an interview with high profile filmmaker Tyler Perry announcing his long planned $800 million studio expansion is now on hold after he saw the capabilities of Sora. I looked up the economic value of video production annually and it's over a hundred billion in 2023 alone. Although Sora has a one minute video limit today, that will change quickly. Within two years, I predict full length movies will be possible, creating what I call a Kodak moment when the entire industry moved away from film and into digital. Kodak held on to the belief that film would make a resurgence resurgence, but it never did. After sale, several failed attempts to embrace digital, the company went bankrupt. The entire film and video production industry will be forever changed. Actors, studios, camera companies, set designers all have to adapt to the new AI, AI reality. And to wrap up my presentation today, I want to leave you with this slide about open AI. They're, they're a very notoriously secretive company and very sensitive to the, the impacts of their products on society. They are vi very likely two years behind releasing products to the market as they work to ensure safety and privacy are respected. The next major version of the popular chat GPT model is rumored to be released in the next few months. GPT-5 is expected to be a major step towards artificial general intelligence or AGI. AGI isn't a product. It's a level of intelligence equivalent or surpassing what humans are at today. This project is in internal testing and they've already dropped tidbits online of progress they've made in math, uh, math computation. There is credible information online suggesting GPT-5 has advanced math capabilities that exceed our current level of knowledge. As with any major industrial change in history comes opportunity for those who act quickly. Now is the time to capitalize on immense technical advantage that is quickly unfolding in front of us. And now I'll ask Kyle Braun to describe the Copilot Factory approach. Take it away, Kyle. Thank you so much, Glenn. So, as, as Glenn mentioned, AI and all, all this buzz around artificial intelligence is super exciting, but it can be a little overwhelming to know kind of where to start, where to dip your toe into these AI waters. So we here at Clear Concepts have developed a crawl, walk, run approach to AI adoption. So what we're suggesting here is that we begin to crawl with AI. And here, what we're suggesting is that we, we look at some off the shelf free resources that exist um, to help you know, start exploring AI and start understanding the capabilities of AI and AI chatbots. Once we're familiar and comfortable with these platforms, we're suggesting that, hey, let's start walking with AI and let's start looking at some off-the-shelf products that are now paid. So we're getting a little more sophisticated with our AI usage here. And of course, the barrier to entry is somewhat higher at this point. And then lastly, once we're comfortable with, with crawling and walking with AI, we start to run with AI. And that's where the co-pilot factory comes in. Uh, that's kind of the kind of the more exciting um, developments in AI pertaining to um, integrating internal business data into that AI experience. And we'll talk about all of these now in sequence. So let's start off at the beginning and let's start to crawl here. Now, our, our flagship crawl product is what's called Microsoft Copilot. What's great about Copilot is that if you're already a Microsoft 365 subscriber, you can access it at no additional charge. All you need to do is just navigate to copilot.microsoft.com in your browser of choosing. 
log in using your M365 credentials, and you'll have access to it at no additional charge. But what Microsoft Copilot is, it's, it's an AI-powered AI conversational chatbot for business use. Now, if you're familiar with ChatGPT, this was developed by an organization called OpenAI, something that Glenn mentioned earlier. And they developed this large language model that fuels ChatGPT. This same model also fuels Microsoft Copilot. So just know that under the hood, we have the same engine fueling both platforms. Now, having said that, there are a couple of advantages to using Microsoft Copilot over some of the other AI chatbot offerings out there like ChatGPT. Top of mind is data confidentiality. So here with Microsoft Copilot, your data is yours. All your conversations are, are uh, inputted into the, into the platform, but aren't saved, aren't logged anywhere, and are not used to retrain that large language model we spoke about earlier. Some other, some other AI chatbots don't offer this capability or this, this functionality. So ChatGPT, for instance, does log and save your previous chats, and those conversations could be used to retrain that large language model. So if you're ideating on some proprietary business idea or submitting confidential information, Microsoft Copilot is definitely the way to go. Microsoft Copilot also offers uh, you the ability to customize your conversational style. So you can select more creative, more balanced or more precise, depending on what type of output you're looking for from the AI bot. Microsoft Copilot is also grounded in data from the internet. So any website that exists out there is up for grabs to, uh, for, for Microsoft Copilot to grab and, and work that into its output that, that you receive in your, in your chatbot interactions. Now, some other AI chatbots uh, don't, have, don't have that live internet connection that we're talking about here. So, like ChatGPT, that free version um, that currently exists out there, that's ChatGPT 3.5. Um, it currently only has data up to January 2022. So if you're looking for tomorrow's weather forecast, um, you'll definitely need to lean on Microsoft Copilot for that. And then lastly, Microsoft Copilot offers reference information. So this is really powerful if you want to validate the output that you're receiving from Copilot, um, or you're maybe just wanting to do a little bit more reading on, on the output that you received, uh, you're able to do so with just the click of a mouse. ChatGPT doesn't offer this functionality, so it's a little bit more of a black box as to how it produced the output that it, that it gave you. So now that we have an understanding of what Microsoft Copilot is, let's just touch on prompt engineering for a moment here. Now, prompt engineering is defined as the process of designing and crafting the input that you provide to your AI chatbots. So very similar to how you would interact with a search engine like Google or Bing, um, you know, that garbage in, garbage out principle definitely applies. Submitting well-written prompts will significantly improve the output that you receive from these models. And conversely, poorly written ones will have an adverse effect on your output. Now we're just going to cover off seven tips and tricks here at a pretty high level just to give you a flavor of what prompt engineering is all about. So here, what we're recommending is that uh, we be specific and descriptive within our prompts. It's also helpful to double down and reiterate key terms or phrases within your prompts. And when you're structuring your prompt, order is very important. You want to include your instructions first, so that's what you want the what, 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 that's what you want the AI model to return. And then you have the supporting content below those instructions. You can help to mitigate the chance of a model hallucination by giving the model an out. You can also employ the chain of thought prompting technique in order to understand how the model came to uh, deriving its answer. Uh, specifying the format is also important, whether it be point form, paragraph form, or letter form. And lastly, it can be helpful to provide examples of the types of output that you're looking for from the AI chatbot. Okay, so we went through these at a pretty high level here, um, but we do offer Copilot 101 training here at Clear Concepts. So that involves uh, going deeper into that Microsoft Copilot platform. That's that free platform we spoke about earlier. Uh, so we do a deep dive on, into that. We also cover those seven prompt engineering tips and tricks at a more detailed level. So we walk through them uh, really closely and walk through a, a couple of examples of each. And then lastly, we head right over into Microsoft Copilot and walk through a few demos, exemplifying some practical use cases of the platform. Okay, so now that we've crawled with AI, 
let's start to walk with AI. And this is where Microsoft 365 Copilot comes in. And basically what Microsoft 365 Copilot does is ingest that Copilot experience into the M365 applications that you already know and love, whether it be Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, amongst others. So to demonstrate, we're gonna show a quick video here. Well, straight to the top, never going down, don't wait for the drop. Stand still, that's the motto, yeah. Brand new bands for the auto, oh. Foot to the ground, full throttle. Big energy for the night, light lotto. Y'all talk lots, never disquiet. Life like a Seinfeld plot. Mm. Ball full of songs, all of them bombs. Something like a minefield guy, boom. Get it, get it, tickets running out quick. Bet it, bet it, never get it out big. Said it, said it, never had a shout it. They said I couldn't ever do it, okay, how's it? Fit a week worth of work in a minute. Machine well oiled, you know how I stay efficient. To do this written, I do this different. Hold up, wait a minute, I ain't finished. Okay. Look, flows the same, the same, the same, the same now. Paved the way the snakes and fakes are chased out. Back to back to back, I changed the pace now. Had to stack the cash until the bank's out. Straight to the top, never going down, don't wait for the drop. Okay, so that was pretty cool. Um, but just to highlight a couple of the applications that were highlighted in that video. So um, Microsoft 365 Copilot is integrated into Word. Now here it helps you with your writing process. So you can just pick that topic, um, start ideating on a couple points, and Copilot can help you flesh out that topic further. It's integrated into PowerPoint as well. Um, it can help you to automatically populate a slide deck with content and assisting with formatting and structure as well. It's in Excel, uh, it can help you to analyze your data and it allows you to ask natural language questions of your data. It lives with an Outlook and helps you to write emails in different contexts. So if you're like me, you often know what you wanna say, but it can be challenging to select the words that convey it in the way that you want. And this is where um, the, the M365 Copilot and Outlook can be really helpful. And then lastly, it's also integrated into Teams. And here it helps you to recap and summarize meetings, outline follow-ups, and much more. So up to this point, our co-pilots have been referencing data that's either publicly available on the internet or what we have provided it within our prompts. Bringing our co-pilot experience to that next level, that, that brings us to custom co-pilots from Copilot Factory. So here, the custom Copilot experience allows you to leverage AI to ask natural language questions of your data, whether it be files like PDFs or Word documents, or data that's housed within a database. Nothing is off the table when you enter the Clear Concepts Copilot factory. And with that, I'll pass things over to Ryan. Right on. Thank you so much, Kyle, and thank you so much, Glenn. Let me just grab control here of the PowerPoint, and, and I promise, folks, I didn't use Copilot just yet on on this Im very important PowerPoint. I still am uh, I still am going to take that work on myself. So uh, let's get to it. And uh, if anyone's been through a presentation with me before, you know that I often uh, Tarantino things. Uh, we're going to have to go back before we can go forward, and we are actually going to go back to the very very beginning. Uh, in fact, for us here at Clear Concepts, as Glenn has mentioned, this AI journey has started between three and four years ago uh, when we first got to view some of this incredible technology and see firsthand uh, the difference that it's going to be making for small and medium-sized businesses. So for us, that started, again, uh, a long time ago, trial, error, blood, sweat, tears, etc., uh, and the scar tissue to prove that we've been through this now a few times and have learned uh, a number of valuable lessons. And so what we knew we needed to do is invest in our team, uh, skilling up across all areas of clear concepts, uh, the technical side of our teams, the adoption and training side of our team, the sales and go-to-market avenues with our teams, as well as the support. Uh, we are a managed service provider at the end of the day. How can we wrap that as a shell around anything that we do with artificial intelligence? And again, that process for us was so important to bring these concepts down to earth and make them work for not just small and medium-sized businesses, but mere mortals. 
you as business owners, managers, team leads, directors, board members, your time is best spent doing what your business does, not worrying about the technology behind the scenes. So crawl, walk, run, again, is a methodology and a process that we've adopted uh, across several lines of business here at Clear Concepts. And again, we had that moment where we believe that it applies here, uh, again, in this moment to artificial intelligence. And again, we knew that we needed to have some service offerings to back up crawl, walk, and run. So as Kyle has taken us through Copilot 101 training and even deploying products like Microsoft Teams Premium that do AI meeting recap and more, uh, again, we slot that into our crawl capabilities when it comes to AI deployment. In the walk category, again, deploying Microsoft 365 Copilot, there's a few more steps other than just turning it on. Uh, really, we need to start talking about data governance and data protection to make sure that these ultra helpful Copilot and AI chatbots aren't getting too much access. So they aren't privy to things that they should not be privy to. And again, when it came to that run, that run category or that run methodology, how can we run with AI and how can we help businesses run with AI? Uh, we sort of hit a roadblock. Uh, there really is no off the shelf products. And so we turn to devise our own uh, bespoke approach to this. And again, that is the co-pilot factory. That is why we are here today. And that is why we're so excited to uh, make all of these announcements around this new business line for us. With Copilot Factory, our purpose is incredibly clear. It is to deliver AI copilots that blend in to your mission, the objectives of your organization, steering you towards new levels of productivity and success. Uh, again, we, we, we hear those cliches about the fifth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution was probably Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive not that long ago. Um, but again, the, the purpose here of Copilot Factory is to take this incredible technology and bring it into your business, make it fit, and save you some time. And again, to reiterate uh, the Clear Concepts approach and our capabilities being so broad, but also just so perfect in this moment. You've likely heard from us about being progressive with the cloud, moving organizations, infrastructure, networking, applications into the cloud. We've been talking about zero trust security, uh, hardening your defenses, making sure that uh, no threat actors can get access to your vital and proprietary information through training, through enabling multi-factor authentication and turning on tools like data loss prevention. And then again, you've likely heard from us around modern work. Microsoft 365 and Teams being so fundamental to that modern work experience and all of that hybrid collaboration that we learned uh, and adopted over the pandemic era, uh, again, is now serving us well in this AI timeframe. Employee experience, process automation and data analytics dovetail into our AI practice so very well. And again, the newer entrance in Copilot Factory and through our AI acceleration programs, Copilot 101 training, getting to know how to use these tools at a fundamental level, um, learning how to be a prompt engineer. We're all gonna have to get there uh, sooner than later. Through to policy uh, consulting and again, custom Copilot development in the Copilot Factory framework. And again, super important uh, because I think this is a rarity out there in the market is you're not going to find too many other organizations that have this depth and breadth of capabilities who are again able to manage, uh, package that rather, and wrap it up in managed service expertise. So again, that is a, a very, very broad AI stroke across all segments and all departments and all teams here within Clear Concepts. So the Copilot factory, the assembly line, think of it that way. If you can picture in your mind, let's take a trip down that Copilot factory assembly line. How do we assemble these Copilot solutions for you and your business? Well, let's first stop at the ideation station. And again, this is where it all begins. This is the germ of the idea. Uh, folks um, frequently hear me talk about having a V8 moment 
We need an app for that. We could have had a V8. We need an AI for that. We need a co-pilot for that. When that idea strikes, that's when we want to start working with you. We want to hear about your, your organization's unique needs and the challenges that your teams are facing. What is keeping you up at night? What data do you wish you could talk to? What process are you struggling with? Let's take a look at those uh, and start to build an AI product around it. We move next to the Data Forge, which is a little bit more of an introspective station. Uh, we are going to start looking at your most valuable data sets. And we're going to start to, to challenge you on what questions do you want to ask your data? Is it financial data? Is it performance data? Is it sales data? Is it student, patient, customer data? Uh, what is most important to your business? What data does your business run on? That is a prime target for an AI uh, co-pilot solution. And in that same realm and in the same stage, we do need to prepare that data. We need to get it either accessible, uh, prepared and structured in a proper way so that the co-pilot solution can read it, index it, search it, et cetera. And again, being very, very mindful of the security ramifications of opening up some of your data to these tools and what sorts of permissions and user accessibility do we want to consider uh, in this stage of the game. And again, this data can come from so many exciting sources. It could be your CRM application, your ERP, your accounting package, or it could be, you know, in traditional documents that uh, hopefully you're storing in SharePoint, OneDrive, uh, and so on. And as well as Kyle has mentioned, these tools also have access to the intelligence uh, or maybe unintelligence of, of internet and third-party data, uh, which again, we can use and infuse into your custom AI solution. The algorithm assembly stage is where we start to build the Copilot core, again, leveraging tools from our partners at Microsoft and OpenAI. Um, these are all consumption-based services that we're very, very careful about, um, prescribing the right technology and the right tools. Certainly a lot of alternatives to the Microsoft stack, a lot of open source projects uh, available out on the internet as well. Those are going to be sort of second tier or second priority. Let's first see if we can uh, affordably and, and, and practically use Microsoft technologies again, just to keep everything inside of your Microsoft tenant. And, and this is that stage where we start to look at long term costs. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of these things are consumable costs, uh, just like the, the water bill or the gas bill at the end of the month. So having a good sense of the amount of traffic, the amount of conversations, transactions with your data that you and your team or your customers are going to be making, uh, at this point we'll be able to give a, uh, a good, better, best estimate of how these products, how much these projects are going to cost in the long term. Feature fitting, I would say this is probably the most fun uh, and the most exciting part uh, short of launching it and using it. Uh, this is where we begin to tailor your co-pilot for you, you and your users and your teams, adding on features that make sense with the goal in mind of saving your users three to five minutes per interaction. That really is our baseline or benchmark, if you will. And we want this co-pilot to become an assistant, a coworker, or a colleague. Uh, imagine peeking over the um, the cubicle wall and asking your coworker a question. That is how we are uh, positioning these co-pilots, and that's really the idea around which we build them. And then adding platform-specific features and capabilities. Really, what I'm talking about here, again, if I could go back to this chart, is is really the endpoint or the destination for your co-pilot. Is it going to live alongside or inside an application? Is it going to be just on the web or is it going to be part of your Microsoft Teams environment? What sort of screen size are we going to serve your co-pilot on? Is it going to be primarily for first line staff that need to ask a question about a piece of equipment or get some, uh, some quick guidance on the go? Maybe they're on their mobile phone or on a tablet sized screen. So again, careful considerations that we need to make as we feature fit your co-pilot. What sort of notifications do you want to get from your co-pilot? Uh, how much do you want it to talk back to you or get your attention uh, if you're in a flow state, for example? 
and then inputs. Um, we have with all of these devices in front of us and in our pockets, the ability to input into our co-pilot. Maybe we want to talk to it and use our voice. Um, maybe we want the co-pilot to have a voice and be in our ears. Um, and again, cameras, sensors, and all the like, can we use that to enrich your co-pilot experience? Uh, a camera obviously being uh, a very, very logical one, and I'll show you some examples in a few minutes. The testing tunnel is where we start to put your co-pilot through its paces. Again, we want to ensure robustness. We want to make sure that uh, sensitive and private data is not accessible to users where it shouldn't be. And again, this is where we will test your co-pilot across a variety of different platforms. We may start developing your co-pilot for the web or to be used in a browser, uh, but you might find that you would prefer that being installed as a Windows app across all of your uh, company devices. It may make sense to transfer that then for first line workers into a mobile first uh, with larger touch targets. So again, we have that ability to pivot if we need to in uh, this section of development. The deployment doc is, again, we are ready, uh, pretty pretty self-explanatory here. We're ready to launch and unlock that potential. Uh, and again, searching out or finding new ways to leverage the investment in the design and development if we can repurpose, uh, retool, or reuse any parts of your co-pilot in, in a future project, uh, we get that ready in this section. And then training, again, most important to us, and, and we believe very fundamentally in adoption, uh, being tied to end user training. We know that we need to get your end users ready to use a copilot, whether that comes through copilot 101 and prompt engineering training, and then more specific training to your uh, custom copilot. We're here for you in this stage of the process. End user documentation if you need it. And again, knowing that. Clear Concepts may be your partner just in AI and just for your co-pilots. If there are other technical teams, other providers, et cetera, uh, that may be working adjacent to the co-pilot solution, we want to play nice. And again, we'll provide technical documentation uh, as needed just to ensure the timely support and use of your co-pilot. And the last stage is the evolution engine. It is an ongoing stage. It's really a never ending job here. Uh, the opportunity to look at continuous improvement, collect feedback from your users, look at costs and see how we can continue to drive those down and really ensure that your co-pilot has enduring value for your organization. See how it's being used, uh, potentially see some ways that we didn't expect it to be used. And again, a, the ability to refine and tweak and change and improve uh, as our relationship involves with your co-pilot. But at the end of the day, at the end of the process, at the end of the assembly line, what pops out or what is the result is your co-pilot. Leveraging your data built around your processes, improving your productivity, and again, to, to restate something that Glenn had mentioned earlier, this is your intellectual property and it truly is your opportunity to develop a competitive advantage. Whether that's going to market faster, getting ahead of, of competitors uh, in a busy marketplace, doing more with less and responding to those economic pressures. Uh, again, out, outwitting or, or outsmarting your competition or just delivering experiences to your customers students, patients, etc., cetera, uh, in new and compelling ways. Absolutely a lot to think about uh, at this time. So we may need some inspiration. Uh, and you'll have to forgive me, a lot of these examples are um, just quickly quickly drawn together with some ideas. Uh, we have a number of co-pilot projects currently in the works none of which are really at the stage to, to be able to be truly demoed, um, but stay tuned. Obviously, in the next few weeks and months, you'll see more examples, more tangible examples from Clear Concepts and Copilot Factory uh, in due time. But I can show you a few here again, in theory, to start to get you thinking. Uh, if you have questions, if can this be done? What about this data? What about that? Um, drop those in the Q and A, and again, the the team and I are more happy, more than happy to, to answer those. 
So the first example here is a conversational chatbot between a user and maybe a boardroom booking system. Uh, as, as we know, a lot of this happens in Exchange Online and in Outlook. It's the place, places we go to to book rooms and book assets and book meetings. Uh, again, if that could be done conversationally in natural language, it is a huge time saver. And further to that, you may be wanting to integrate your building management system. If you have a smart building, if you have any sort of physical building automation, uh, as long as there's a programmable interface, we can talk to those kinds of applications. Another example here, and Kyle mentioned it earlier on, uh, this has probably been so far the most popular request for custom co-pilots is we want a policy bot, we want an HR bot, we want to be able to have context around our employee documents, our benefits, uh, our dress code, those kinds of questions uh, uh, typically uh, are being peppered through to, to HR. Can we have a bot? Can we have a co-pilot that answers that institutional organizational knowledge type of questions? So in this example, we've combined a employee handbook that is in PDF. Um, and you, you may choose to upload that document in the moment. You may choose to have that stored in SharePoint, Teams, OneDrive. I'll even let you get away with Dropbox. Uh, that's OK. Again, all of those applications we can tie into where you have your data today in the cloud and leverage AI and a co-pilot experience to talk to those documents. Another example is going to be line of business. Whether your line of business is specific to your industry vertical, whether you're using some more generic solutions like QuickBooks and Sage, Dynamics 365, what is the most important application, app, software to your business? Is it your CRM? Is it your HRMS where you manage your employee information or payroll? Is it MailChimp, for example, where you do all of your outbound marketing? Or is it some legacy on-premise uh, system that you use, that you've invested in, you know, 5, 10, 15 years ago? Again, nothing is really off the table here, as Kyle mentioned. We can connect to these systems and bring that data to the AI party. And again, the co-pilot serves as your interface to talk and to have those natural language conversations with the data in these systems. Uh, next one here is, um, for example, if your organization generates a lot of documents that sort of follow a templated uh, experience. Here, I'm just gonna click play on this if it's not already playing for you. Uh, again, we're just using a Windows app here to help us generate a scope of work or a contract or a particular document. If it comes from a templated source with some variables, whether you want to, uh, again, input those variables in traditional user interface with click buttons and uh, radio buttons and drop down menus and all the like, or if you'd prefer to have a conversation with your document generation tool, uh, again, we can do all of the above. And the next one here is, again, just another static example. Uh, perhaps you're in IT support and you want to offer your customers an AI tool to learn about using OneDrive, uh, learn how to support IT uh, tickets, how to submit those tickets, how to get updates on their accounts and their various IT assets through their environment. Again, the integration possibilities are endless and the conversational quality of these tools has improved uh, even over the last few months and, and will continue to do so uh, over the next few months and years, no doubt. A few more examples. Uh, again, here we have some projects in progress, not in the best shape to demonstrate just quite yet live. Uh, but sentiment analysis is another one we've been asked to look at quite frequently. This can be tied to customer service. This could be tied to your call center infrastructure. If you have your phone systems and the like, meetings, email, and social media, wherever it is that you're providing customer service to those that you serve, we can run sentiment analysis on all of this activity to really hear what's maybe not heard or see what maybe goes often unseen in comments, in feedback, and in closure notes. So picking out negative, neutral, and positive sentiment from all sorts of different uh, formats is 
easily done uh, using AI tools. Another one here, uh, everybody knows I love the, the frontline workers. I love users that don't necessarily sit in front of a, a PC or um, a notebook all day. Um, those that are out there on the front lines, perhaps stocking shelves, um, developing planograms for retail, uh, those that are out there doing with, with their hands. Um, let's bring AI to assist in computer vision. And here's an example where we're just taking a picture of a store shelf. Uh, it's, it's after lunch. My apologies if this picture is going to make you hungry for a salty snack. Uh, but here we can do image recognition. We can do anomaly detection. We can do uh, basically all sorts of interesting computer vision um, objectives to identify things, their position, and where they may be on a shelf, either correctly or incorrectly. And this can be built into a mobile app. This could be built into a Teams app. There is a lot of potential to do um, computer vision type of solutions. And extending computer vision, uh, again, not just pictures of the real world, but applying computer vision to documents, um, whether that is scanned documents or you're receiving digital documents through e-fax or through email. Uh, again, we can train AI and build a model around what a purchase order should look like, what an invoice should look like, uh, what all sorts of different reports you may receive from vendors and partners and customers and otherwise. Uh, we can turn that very, very quickly into structured data that we can then process, automate, or integrate, again, into any of those line of business applications that you may be using. We can let computers be our eyes for us. And again, AI is playing the part of um, comprehending what we're looking at and, and perhaps even deeper cognition around, is this what I am expecting? Are these products in the right place on the shelf? What is this that I am looking at? So I, I know we have a few minutes left. Um, Q&A module is absolutely open. I, I'm going to ask Kyle and Glenn to uh, come back on camera and come off of mute in, in just a quick second. Uh, but really to recap everything, uh, I know we covered a lot of ground here today. If your organization is ready to start your AI journey, if you just have some basic AI training needs for your team today, or you're starting to look ahead, starting to prepare your data state for the AI area. If you're struggling to integrate a number of different data silos, you're just not quite sure how to approach, or maybe you've already received some very expensive integration uh, project quotations, let's see how AI can play. Let's take a look. If you're curious about developing an AI strategy for your organization, whether it is for profit, not for profit, small, entrepreneurial, up into the enterprise, we're more than happy to help and assist with that. And again, if we've inspired you to, to take a look at some products off the shelf, whether that's Microsoft Copilot, Teams Premium for AI Recap, Microsoft 365 Copilot, if you wanna chat in all of the different Office and Office 365 applications, or if you're truly ready to take that step, into custom AI, uh, into a more bespoke solution, and you want to drive into the Copilot factory, by all means, we are happy to have those conversations. Uh, you can head over to clearconcepts.ca slash AI. Uh, our AI practice is detailed there with links over again to everything that is the Copilot factory. And last but not least, again, just, just thank you very much. Thank you for taking some time uh, out of your days today. Uh, thank you so much to my co-presenters, Kyle and Glenn. Uh, I'll invite them back on now if you guys have any closing thoughts or remarks. Uh, again, folks, clearconcepts.ca slash AI or any questions that you have, uh, feel free to drop into the chat or into the Q&A module.